I caved. <laughs> I didn't really consider Godot during the whole runtime fee scandal a year ago. Ultimately, I ended up just sticking with Unity. And then for some reason last week, I woke up and I decided to watch Bracky's how to make a video game tutorial, which is a Godot tutorial in bed, not following it, just watching it for entertainment. I know it's weird, but it dawned on me. Godot has been getting better. It has gained some serious popularity and there's a bunch of reasons why I should swap to Godot. It's open source. So there's this philosophical push that as many resources as possible should be free and available to everyone. There's just so much free shit online that you can just use. Like GodotShaders.com exists and I can't really recall any analog to this website. For Unity shaders, add-ons are free and some of them are insanely powerful. There's things from multiple controller support to terrain to an overhaul of the physics engine and you don't have to pay for any of it. No modules, no add-ons, just any sort of art assets that you don't want to make yourself. It's also really lightweight. I think Godot 4.3 is 130 megs total. Unity, I think is eight gigs and Unreal is 35. I'd like to be able to make stuff on my laptop and not have it explode. Last summer, I made a video about what engine you should choose, which I know is a highly debated topic. And I'm not gonna pitch Godot necessarily for games with large development teams or large scale open worlds. I wanna make arcadey games. I've seen a good bit about Godot and its ease of use. So I wanted to see if I could out pace my networked character controller in Unity in less time. And spoilers, I might be porting Castle Wars to Godot in the near future. In Unity, it took me about a week. So if I can outpace that in Godot, I feel like I can outpace most aspects of the core game development. Also, I'm learning the engine as I go. So if you have any tips or tricks, please put them in the comments. I'm sure anyone else who wants to try Godot would like to have them there. So thank you. Anyways, here's how it happened. I downloaded the engine and I followed this tutorial. From that, I got an FPS character controller, which could do your basic FPS character things. It could walk, look around, jump and sprint. And then I organized and exported all of the important variables to the editor and backed it all up on Git. And the crazy part, this took like 20 minutes, 20 minutes, easy peasy. Oftentimes, naive game developers and people who don't really make games will say things along the lines of just add multiplayer. Obviously, to anyone who's tried to make a multiplayer game before, it's not that easy. Usually, multiplayer is something you have to plan in from the beginning or else it'll pretty much take a complete rewrite of your game to get working. With Godot, it took about 30 minutes. Obviously, this is a very simple project and I haven't made a lot of the design decisions that would make adding in multiplayer complicated just yet. This is about as simple as it could be. We have a character controller and we want to have multiple character controllers. Honestly, it was kind of as easy as just add multiplayer. I was able to take the existing character controller and get it spawning over the network with the help of this tutorial. I only really had to watch the sections for the host and join UI menu, the server client setup, how to use the multiplayer spawner node, how to set multiplayer authority, and how to set up the multiplayer synchronizer on the FPS character that we already made. And after about 30 minutes, we had multiplayer. The multiplayer spawner and synchronizer nodes are incredibly easy to use and they come standard with the engine. It's not a library like Fishnet for Unity. This is a very high level networking setup. I don't have to think about how the information is being transported and what protocols we're using. It's kind of simple to just add multiplayer in Godot. You can take your character controller, add a couple of nodes to it, tell something to spawn it, say who owns this character and that's it. Like there's a little bit of code to get the network authority set and that's fine. That's really not that bad. Godot multiplayer is just so much easier to set up in my opinion than Fishnet is in Unity. That's what I was using and it's built in. It's built in. The only issue I have is that it is client authoritative by default. And so if you wanted something that was server authoritative, you'd have to build in that logic yourself. And that's kind of fine. I don't intend on making games where people are really gonna benefit from cheating or, or hacking certain values on the character controller because I'm gonna pretty much expose all of those anyways so you can fuck around and make your own thing. I was only really trying to use client-side prediction to mask some of the replication issues that I was having with client authenticated movement in Fishnet. I know that's a lot of words, I'm sorry. So now for the part where it gets a little more complicated. I not only want to be able to make multiplayer games, but I wanna make it so that you can have split screen and multiplayer games. If you've seen any of my videos, you know I take a lot of inspiration from Halo and they just let you and your friends join a networked game from the same console. You 
don't even have to have individual accounts. So how do we do this? First, we have to split the input so each character is only controlled by a specific controller on the local client. I found an add-on called Multiplayer Input, which adds a singleton instance that you can call in place of the built-in Godot input functions. Second, we need to spawn in the first player for each local client on the server. Since the server doesn't necessarily know how many local players are gonna be on each client, we're just gonna spawn the first one. Then we're gonna have to catch this first player spawning on the local client and then ask the server to spawn additional player characters for each local player. Then lastly, this is honestly kind of an easy part, we just have to split the screen. When we intercept the first player spawning on the local client, we set up split screen views for one, two, three, or four players, and then we assign cameras under these viewports to remote transforms on each player character as they spawn in. The character controller will then move this remote transform and the remote transform will move the camera within the viewport and we have split screen. I got all of this working. It took a little bit longer than the 20 minutes for the character controller and the 30 or so minutes for network replication. It looked like a couple of days, I think three, but it's still fucking crazy. Like I probably could have done this a lot quicker if I knew what I was doing and didn't have to look at tutorials or if I'd used the engine for more than a week. Godot is open source, so it's not gonna advance as quickly as a commercial engine like Unity can, but it surely is gaining popularity, especially with the indie crowd. And with more adoption, the engine's gonna grow faster. We're already seeing more and more commits get pushed to the Godot repo. Unity is a good engine, but it's just backed by a company that keeps shooting themselves in the foot. Like we had the iron source ad scandal, the runtime fee scandal, they hired a CEO. This is the CEO for the runtime fee scandal was a CEO that was forced to resign from EA. And then more recently in January, we had a bunch of layoffs. And I'm sure I'm forgetting some controversies. Unity is a publicly traded company. So the best interest of developers is often going to be sidelined to protect the interests of the shareholders. Godot doesn't have to bend to that. On top of that, in Unity, it took me about four weeks to develop a lobby system with networked split screen and have all of the clients connect like this. So if I can do all of this in three days in Godot, development is kind of, it's, it's seeming a lot quicker. And I've been using Unity since I was in middle school. I started using Godot last week. On top of that, Unity's network support has always been rocky. There, It's always some library. There's a bunch of them, some of which Unity produces or produced and has since killed. The Godot implementation probably has its quirks that I haven't run into yet, but so far it has been much, much easier to get working than Unity. So this has got me really excited and possibly a little too ambitious. I have developed a Unity exit plan. I have a few projects I need to finish up. I need to finish the knockback shooter. Then we have the Metroidvania, which I wanna do a second pass at and just apply a little more of what I've learned artistically to that and sort of just polish it up. And then I have a couple of miscellaneous things. And then I wanna port Castle Wars to Godot. I wanna do it. Also, I apologize, this channel is a little scattered at the moment. It's also taking a little bit between uploads because I'm just busy. But the art series is still on. There's three to four episodes in the works at the moment. I don't want to spoil what they're on, but they're coming. I have a bunch of things in the pipeline. I just need to finish them. <laughs> if that's not the artist condition, I don't know what is. Anyways, if you want to see me try Unreal, which I think is fucking hilarious, check out this video. Otherwise, I'll see you soon. Peace.